Good morning, Schlag fans. It's Morgan coming to you with the Daily Schlag number 29. And I am back out here in Peach Valley with the dog. Hey, dog. <laughs> Going for our morning hike. Uh, we are on the Candy Cane Loop, which is one of the easier, like, super beginner trails out here. It's really, really fun, fast, flowy. Uh, just a great time, actually. And as you look out over there, all that, all that over there is open to us riding. And all that over there is open to us riding. It's about 80,000 acres of riding area here at Peach Valley slash flat top. And yeah, and right behind me, the top of that ridge is the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. So you can ride right up to it and look in. It's super, super cool. Um, today we are going to be taking the motor at least out of the frame on a 2015 YZ250. Uh, we're going to be working on the Little Trail 70. It's a 1974. Uh, mainly just getting a list of things that we need to order for it. And I don't know what else. Probably probably lots. We might even take the YZ250 apart um, to start putting the crank in it and everything like that. So it's going to be a good day. Stick with us. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the daily schlog. Alright guys, we are at the shop and ready for job at number one of the day, the 1974 Honda Trail 70. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, we're really just going to be making a list of everything it needs, uh, kind of just going through it um, bit by bit to see what all we need to get for it to make it run. Uh, the guy is going to be using it as a kind of a pit bike, camping bike with his kids because he's got a 500 uh, that we've been working on. And he's got little bitty kids, they're like two, four, and six, or anyway, something like that, little bitty. And so this would be a lot more fun to go chase him around on. So start by, we're gonna get, obviously you're gonna need a carburetor kit to just rebuild that, make sure that's all good. Uh, next we're gonna take this airbox cover off. Um, but the chain and sprocket actually look okay, at least for now. Um, probably we'll replace those but I think first we need to make sure it's gonna run and start and all that. So we got a bit of an Earl leak there. So I think it's coming from the shift shaft seal right there. It sure looks like it, cause it's kind of running down the shaft and all that. And then the bike, you know, leans on this side. So we'll definitely get one of those. Let's take a look at the air filter. I think, actually, I don't know. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> That's actually, <laughs> I think I said that I was gonna talk about air filters at least once every day. So let's talk about this air filter. This thing actually looks great. So I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I mean, it's in really good shape. So that's awesome. Uh, the fork, so when I pulled it up, you can see. Those fork seals are blown, so we're gonna need to get seals for that. Let's see. It kicks over, which is good. Uh, I actually already knew that. He didn't buy it until he knew that the uh, motor kicked over. Now the throttle is terrible, and I don't know exactly what's going on there. These are interesting. The cables go inside the um, the handlebars so all you chopper guys out there who are like thinking it's so cool to put cables and lines inside bars to make it clean you're late <laughs> uh, but it's definitely like super sticky so we'll get a new at least a new throttle cable probably a new throttle housing we gotta see if this thing's gonna spark. So it's got a battery in it. I doubt it's any good. Oh, that's a brand new battery. I don't think that's ever had acid in it. Okay, well that's cool. So we'll fill that up. Yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna fill that thing up and uh, 
plug it all in and see if this thing sparks because it probably needs a points and condenser but we'll give it a shot just to see all right so i filled the battery up it didn't do anything it's a super old battery but check this thing out it's really kind of awesome so look at that it's like made in japan with the honda wing right on the battery that is awesome it looks brand new and it didn't look like it had ever had acid in it but it's definitely not producing any electricity <laughs> So because of that, the spark plug's not doing anything either. These bikes, they gotta have a battery for the spark to work. It's called a battery points ignition. And so you need a battery and then, you know, that's good. And that's pro providing electricity to the ignition system. And then I'll show you how the points work. When the points break, it boom, fires the battery or fires the spark plug. And without a battery, it won't work. And the charging system, the stator and this thing just charges the battery. So. Uh, and probably runs the lights too, but the, anyway, um, it doesn't, the stator does not have anything to do with the ignition. It's just a, basically a charging coil. So I'm going to take this off and take a look at the points in the condenser. We'll probably just get new ones because they're cheap. Oh yeah. We're going to need some things in there. Like a lot of times, there's a bunch of rust in there. Eh, it's not the end of the world. I bet we can clean it up. So, but there's the points up there. And I bet they're not working either. So, what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off. Get that flywheel off. Uh, take a good look at everything and see what we actually need to order. So, for these old style Phillips head fasteners, we're going to be using the uh, impact driver, hand impact driver to get those loose. They don't generally like to come loose. So there it is, old school flywheel that we got to get off. Take a look inside there. I'll show you kind of how it works. It's pretty like, let's see. You can even see those points. So if you look in there, you can see those points breaking. So they're doing what they need to do, but it's, uh, I don't know if the timing is right or any of that. So we'll pop this thing off, take a good look at it, make a list of all the things you need to get. <laughs> so the cool thing about this this puller is the same puller that you use on modern two strokes, uh, like KTM, Yamaha, every, it's awesome. I love it. Left hand thread guy. There we go. All right, actually not as bad as I thought. I was a little worried. I saw this and thought, uh-oh. But actually, that's not terrible. But that condenser is definitely junk. And uh, I'm sure these points are too. So we'll get new ones. Start fresh. I have a feeling the stator is going to be okay. It really looks pretty good. Just this last little part. So we can probably clean that up. Take it off and clean it up. But, uh, yeah, I think it's actually going to be all right. Sweet. So, points condenser. So, inside that flywheel, as you see right there, super rusty, but some sandpaper and a little bit of time. I think we'll just get that all cleaned up and be good to go. At least worth a shot before we just order that stuff. Like, the points and condenser and all that is so cheap, it's like, might as well. But, uh start getting into the flywheels and things like that it gets a little more expensive so um and you know we're not in a huge hurry for this thing so sweet all right so we got our list together zach's checking out where we can get all the parts uh there's a place called trail my or something like that that stocks a ton of this stuff so um now we wait um which is cool because we got plenty of other things to do and um yeah, I'm excited to work on this thing. I can't wait till all this stuff gets here. 
I will just pack everything up in this box, put it over on the shelf, put it down, and then uh, I think next we're going to pull the YZ250 up and take the motor out of the frame. Actually, first we're going to make a cup of coffee. All right, we're going to switch up the coffee today. Let's go with some Ethiopian Yergachev. Freshly ground. Garrett Anderson. Howdy. What's happening? Not too much. Bro. Famous Garrett, Garrett Anderson. <laughs> Picking up his t shirts, though. <laughs> Boom. Woo. Nice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What's happening, man? Just getting my we? stuff together. Nice. So, Get your we're, shit yeah. I know what I have to get now and then I get charger? some other stuff. Well, I don't know. My 450 already makes a lot of power. Yeah. I don't need Boost that 300, dude. Nah. <laughs> Tori already has me with like the green spring in there and stuff, so. Yeah. I don't think she wants more power. Yeah, she does. <laughs> I gotta get her a new battery. I think the one in my bike's fine, but I'm just gonna change it because it's yeah. the OEM battery and it's been in there. I don't know. At least two years. Long, two long recent seasons, it, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. Part of my strategy is I'm just going to try to make the 450 easier to ride for the year. Yeah. So if you much. get a recluse, I mean, let's get the good one. Well, yeah, that's what I figured. Like, it's don't like bother. Yeah, don't bother with the... No, I wouldn't. Because the clutch the pull's last. already stupid heavy. Yeah, and then... I don't want it to be worse. Well, and it, it would be worse, and it's... The, che the cheaper one is like, it's like banjo tight. Yeah. It's not, there's no free play. This is husky, mm -hmm. right? Because the way it... The, for the pipe? No, no, for your bike, for the recluse. No, no, uh, no, it's YZ a YZ450. YZ okay. YZ450X, FX. But uh, it's a, uh, yeah, the way they open up the pressure plate mm -hmm. on the cheap one is with the cable. So yeah, it's okay. banjo. It's like, ding! And so, like, there's no. It's like off or on. Well, but it, yeah, you get a little modulation, but you don't. What year is it? 17? Okay. You don't get a. It's, it just feels horrible. All right, next job, YZ250 coming apart, putting a crank and everything in this one. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's get the motor out of the frame right now. <clears throat> Super duper quick tech tip. When you're taking things apart, and if you don't know where everything goes, like, just instinctively, like, I could probably put this YZ250 together with my eyes closed from a, just a basket full of parts, because I've done so many. But, um, if you're not like that, if that's not your, you know, situation, don't be afraid of taking things apart. But, when you got a bolt like this, this is holding the pipe on, take it, and put it back in where it goes, you know, far enough that it's not going to fall out. Same with that one. Then you don't have to remember. It's really nice. And then as you're going back together, you're like, oh, where are those balls? Oh, there they are. It's awesome. So yeah, we're going to keep taking this thing apart. Subframe off. Another tech tip, just take the subframe off, trust me. You're doing a lot of things on bikes. If it's if it's an easy, simple bike like this, just take it off. If it's uh, uh, got fuel injection, a bunch of wires, stuff like that, you just rotate it up. But seriously, it's so nice getting this thing out of the way. Another tech tip, motor mounts. When you get them off, put the bolts back in just the way they went. Put the nuts and washers all in the same orientation. Just save you a whole bunch of time trying to figure out which way it goes. Again, I hope, honestly, one of the goals of this channel is to get you folks so you're not afraid to take things apart. Because honestly, you really shouldn't be. Now obviously, I get things in here that people <laughs> totally screw up and it ends up costing them more money and that's a bummer. But every failure is a learning opportunity right so don't be afraid to take things apart you know it might cost you some money but come on you can't take it with you right let me show you something 
So remember the uh, little 1974 uh, CT70 we took the flywheel off? Same puller. 2015 YZ250. And before some of you people, well, that, this is all black and it's no good because it's all the one. No, it's because it's awesome. That's awesome. But the CT70 was way ahead of its time. With flywheel technology. Oh. I also have to show, show you guys this too. So, uh, I, I've been doing this a long time. And I can't tell you how many people have brought in YC250s or have taken a flywheel off of a YC250 after I worked on it and said, Dude, it's missing one of the bolts. No, it only has three in it. I don't know why they do that, but there's only three bolts in the stator cover. It's just the way they do it. They've always done it that way, so... Don't worry, it's not missing anything. Uh. So one of the things that I do that drives me the craziest <laughs> is I leave drain pans under things and then I drop things in them. Uh, you'd think I'd learn after all these years to just move the drain pan, but for some reason, no. Hey guys, so sorry I didn't film it, but I just got to work on that. <laughs> Which is totally awesome. Just put tires on it. It is a beautiful piece of machinery. 1290 Super Duke with all the coolness. You can be famous now, Don. Well, your, your bike's going to be famous now. I'm filming the shoot a picture of it. Oh, I'm, I'm filming it. You're filming? Why? This is Don's bike because I got a YouTube channel. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And like that thing is cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Look at that thing. That's what's yeah. cool, bike. Yeah. All right, guys. End of the day. Great day. Got to work on some cool stuff. That KTM 1290 is rad. I'm bummed that I didn't get to ride it. Uh, the guy was just waiting here. He's a like friend. He just waited for the tires to get done, and he just boogied. So I didn't get to ride it this time. Next time I will, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but coming tomorrow, we are going to rebuild that motor to put into that frame and it's going to be awesome so if you want to watch us rebuild a yz250 motor crankshaft and everything make sure you tune in uh, also subscribe to the channel and click that little notification bell because that will let you know when we do new videos which is almost every day at about six o'clock at night um and i'm gonna make a separate whole video just on rebuilding that bike or rebuilding that motor um it'll be a whole separate video in depth into that so tomorrow's schlag is going to be more of the highlights of it different tips and tricks on doing that kind of stuff uh also we got some more bikes in for love we got a 250 xcf in for chain sprockets which is cool uh we got a 300 xc in, and we got a diagnose it's not running very good it's 2019 the head is definitely leaking. The head pipe going into the cylinder is definitely leaking. Uh, but it's not running right, and we're not sure why. <laughs> so uh, the owner of it beats on his stuff pretty hard. Um, so hoping it's just a head pipe or maybe a clogged up carburetor. It acts like it's really lean. So hopefully that's it. Um, got my bike over there waiting on some cool new stuff coming. I'm really excited that the Sedona guys are sending me tires. And the new steel belted things and this is big giant giant news guys giant news I am going to try the tubeless system again <laughs> so I was talking to the owner of new tech the guy that makes the nitro mooses and tubeless and we we're getting a set up for the new steel belted radials the new Sedonas and he's like dude you gotta try tubeless that tire is made to run low power blah blah and I'm like he knows that I don't love that system, but he talked me into it. So he sent me one of those. He's also sending me a bunch of mooses, so whatever. Um, but yeah, hopefully that all happens before I go to Arizona next week. And we'll be just shooting some schlogs down there and riding and doing all sorts of awesome stuff in Lake Havasu. So make sure you stay tuned for that because that's going to be a lot of fun also. Anyway, 
I gotta get home to my wife and kids. The dog needs to get home. Hey dog, Leia. That's a poppers. That's a good poppers. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. Yeah. We got to get home and have a lovely evening with the family. You guys get out, spread the gospel of two wheels, and please, it's seriously getting crazy nice outside. You got to find some time to ride. You dirt bikes!